So here we are for another My Team episode. We're back again, and this time we're starting off the action with a cheeky little spin here at the Hungarian Grand Prix. Now, if you haven't seen the previous episode, go check it out, guys. Link in the top right for the French Grand Prix at Paul Ricard. And this is the last race before the summer break in this career mode. So you join me at the end of my race strategy program in practice, and... I fell the first two laps and that led me to believe and also combined with the end of session lap times, I think for this one we might have to just tweak the AI a little bit and bring it down to 108 just to try and be a bit more competitive. It seems like this is one of those tracks where the AI are pretty strong so I'm going to make that adjustment and we're going to stick with it through qualifying and the race so hopefully that all goes well. After practice though we got a bunch of discounts for the chassis, the aero, uh, the engine even the durability not really super effective ones though they're kind of you know brake upgrades drs upgrades not the kind of stuff we really want to do but that's what the game is giving us right now so yeah this weekend the weather forecast is dry in terms of upgrades we have one on the car but so does everybody else the upgrade for us this weekend is a, sh a chassis upgrade for the tire wear improvement so yeah the field is still pretty damn close if you look at the start of the season compared to now, it's really, really competitive, but we're still kind of lagging behind in that bottom half of the midfield. We do have two more upgrades on the way, they should hopefully take us above Aston Martin if they arrive, and it's a crucial phase because we have those two upgrades along with hopefully adding another at the end of this episode, so that will mean that we should have at least three upgrades on the car hopefully before the next race at Spa. With that said, we jump into qualifying in Q1 and you can see here my first lap before it even started got off to a bit of a shaky start as we struggled with the back end through the final corner and that is going to cost us time down the main straight all the way down to turn one. So we're probably going to be down in the first sector by a little bit as we now skip towards the end of the lap. Here we are through sector three trying to see if I can set a decent banker to aim for and then try to improve the lap time gradually as the session goes on through the final corner keep it nice and tight through here as you want to try and gain lap time this time we have no issues with instability as we open drs and say 115.4 which is about four tenths off the Haas boys ahead of albon joe as well eventually we're back to the pits and you can see that we are even dead equal with turbo chair our teammate in terms of lap time after the first runs however joe and Orlando out of position so that technically would put us in the drop zone so then second attempt you can see we're up by six one hundredths and technically finding that lap time that we lost at the start of the lap on the previous run but we just push a bit too hard through that right hander and i do catch the back end but we lose a bit of time and eventually backed off went back to the pits put another set of tires on and we're gonna go again so here we are with 20 seconds to go we're gonna start the lap as we open drs and make our way down to turn one. Spot the braking. The 50 just before, I'd say, is the sweet spot. Down to third, possibly fourth gear. I completely missed the apex, though, as I didn't quite get the braking or the rotation through there. Down to turn number two now. Trying to go in a bit early on the, on the entry of the apex to try and recover some lap time, which we managed to do successfully. Um, that does compromise our exit, but still, we're pretty much even in the first sector. Into now the over... The crest left-hander trying to keep it within track limits. Now this long right where last time, of course, we had that issue. This time, no trouble whatsoever. Into the chicane, right left, over the curbs. But we're losing time. We're not really improving anywhere as we now head into these long lefts and rights. I completely get the line wrong through there. I turned in too early for the right-hander and I had to correct it. And then we just kept on bleeding time through this sequence. Now into sector three, hard on the brakes through this 90 degree right. We do recover a bit of lap time as we now head into the final two corners. We gain a load of time through here, nearly a full tenth through the penultimate corner. And now the final corner, really early this time and super tight through the final apex. And we find another half a tenth, but it's not going to be enough as we don't even improve. And unfortunately, that is going to be qualifying over for us in P22 and last place. Not ideal, a bit frustrating. I feel like the pace still isn't there, even on 108. Um, if I analyze you know, the lap, I'd say the first sector wasn't great. My exit wasn't that good to start the lap. And then you know, we also messed up turn one. So I do think 
There was about a full 10th in Sector 1 alone. Sector 2 was fine on my first run. If I matched that, that would have been fine. And then I reckon there was about another 10th and a half in the final sector. So two and a half tenths left in it all in, which still would have given us at best maybe P19. So yeah, the McLaren's having a bit of a shocker. That was a big surprise. Ricardo Norris out in Q1. Other than that, Paul Chair P17 just misses out on Q2. Perez on the bubble in P16. So quite a few surprises there. But crucially, we're out and uh, it's not looking good. So we're going to stick with 108 for the race. I think it is track specific. It's not necessarily um, a game thing, but not ideal. And both cars out in Q1. So we'll go again for the race and try and turn it around. And fingers crossed, the strategy can play a part because we need something special in a track where, you know, the nickname is Monaco without the barriers because it's so hard to overtake here. So let's see what we can do in the race. Welcome to Budapest once again for another round of Formula One action. Historically, a good race for first-time victories, with Button, Hill, Alonso and Heike Kovalainen all reaching the top step of the podium for the very first time right here. We're northeast of Budapest for today's race at the 2.7-mile Hungaro Ring circuit. 14 corners here, 8 to the right and 6 to the left, on a track where downforce is king and passing is notoriously difficult. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. And the smooth operator Carlos Sainz completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have... Hamilton, Verstappen, Sergio Perez, and Joe, Albon, Russell, Mick Schumacher, and Pierre Gasly, Vettel, Latifi, Fernando Alonso, and Magnussen, Sonoda, Ocon, Theo Porcher, and Jack Aitken, Norris, Stroll, Ricardo, and Martinez. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. Right, I've done this intro about 15 times and I can't seem to do it. So we're starting on the hard tire, very simple. We're gonna go nice and long, hope for a safety car or a VSC or maybe some AR battles or something. The plan here is to try and have decent tire temp and just be able to push all the time. Fuel wise, I'm going for 1.5 laps extra. That should be okay, hopefully. And yeah, we're gonna get into it because we're starting last. We've got nothing to lose. Let's turn it around. And I want to hear your predictions in the comments down below. So edit the comment once you're done and let me know what you think. Right, let's do this. It's time for the race start. It looks like actually the majority of cars are on the soft tire. That was the tire that I was recommended to start on, to be fair. So it doesn't entirely surprise me. But anyway, that aside, let's line her up and get hopefully a decent start. It's going to be painful, I think, on this hard tire. But I'm expecting things to kind of pan out and calm down naturally. Lots are on. And run away. Not a bad start to be fair. Okay, cheers Elvis. Anyway, that's not relevant right now. So we're going to turn one. We're going to go to the outside here. Paul Chair having a pretty damn poor start from P17 down to P21. Not ideal, but again, there's a lot of soft runners in the mix. So they're going to be pretty damn quick. And I think this mixture of compounds is what's going to cause this race to be a bit hectic and a bit unpredictable. So we've just got to try and stay with the pack, really. That's going to be the main thing. And just go long, save our tyres. That's going to really help us out. There's no point in me really passing too many cars, especially those in the softs, because they're just going to overtake us again. As we've got a bit of chaos ahead. Uh, yellow flag, bit of contact, possible damage here. Everyone going super, super slow. Something's happened. And we're losing a load of time to the lead group. But someone's got some bad damage and this is what I mean. Chaos. And yet another one. We've got more contactors. And now Romero's gone around. Somehow that's a legal overtake. And we're up to P16. Although Stroll trying to get up the inside there. But I think he's got damage. Either way, it's all kicked off on this opening lap, which wasn't ideal. We lost a load of time to the cars ahead as well, which we definitely don't want. Anyway, we're going to get overtaken, I think, by pretty much everyone on this tyre. Although Straw does pit due to damage. Fernando Alonso in the pit lane as well. Right, so P15 for us for now. Although I'm expecting Lando to get by very quickly in the McLaren. Lando having a look up the inside there. Very shy, but he's looking. 
We've got Ricardo for company as well now, so both McLarens looking for a way through. We've got another big kind of AI pack build up up ahead. So we could expect some chaos from there. I'm not going to fight Lando, although he makes a mistake, so... We will happily take it and stay in front as Ricardo gets past. So does Ocon. So it's all kicking off behind us as well. This is what I mean. The AI can be a bit reckless around here. So let's just do our own race. Focus on ourselves and then see what happens. Right, Ricardo this time does get by. He had a pretty decent exit out the final corner. So there we go. That's one McLaren through. I'll see if I can stick with him and get DRS next time around. But I don't think it's going to be easy. Lander also looking for the move. He's going to have the RS on us here, but we'll just be able to stay in front for now. Yeah, we don't have the pace. Daniel has dropped us, and now we'll see if Lando does get by this time around. Nope. Oh, yes, he will. Here he comes. I'm not going to use any batteries, so this should be pretty easy for Norris. We're going to leave the outside wide open for him. There we go. Trying not to waste any time in battles. We will try to keep Ocon at bay. He's on the medium, so he should be a bit more manageable. Oh my god, I can't touch a good exit through there. Yeah, we're not going to keep him at bay, I don't think. A straight line speed. A straight line speed isn't too bad, actually, considering we don't have the RS. But yeah, not ideal. Sonoda, though, with car issues, and that's going to help us out a little bit. Plus, I feel like we're just lacking pace. Even the hard time maybe might have been the right choice. We'll see you later on, though. I'm actually going to let Paul Chair go here. I'm not going to fight him. He seems faster, so we'll let him crack on. Zhou Guan Yu, Max Verstappen in the pits. So they started on soft, obviously, and then I've decided to box. Pretty early, so that's a sign for the soft runners maybe having to pit already for a fresh set of tyres. We are pretty close to overheating the left rear on the hard tyre, which is insane. So we're definitely going to try to avoid the soft tyre at all times this race. Otherwise, we won't even survive two laps. Without overheating, so now they're just up the road now as he's struggling with his car issues. Let's try and close in. Paul Chair goes through on Sonoda. Let's see if I can nick some DRS. That would be nice to get back within DRS range. There we go. So we're going to be next up to try and pass Yuki. Still no more pit stops, just for Stappen and Joe for now. I wonder if maybe they've got damage instead. This is where everyone else has been passing him through here, but obviously we don't quite have the pace. I think we are genuinely slow. The hard tyre, it doesn't account for this much, you know, pace deficit. We're just not very fast around here. I could have maybe even raced on 106, in fairness. Anyway, let's try and get snow to here. We know our straight line speed's pretty decent, so this should be a good help. DRS open. Here we go. In the raw tracks. Struggling to really edge ahead, the Alpha Tauri. Hanging on quite nicely, but we go around the outside. And I'll break him, and there we go, job done. Let's try and keep up with Teo here, we're racing him today. That's pretty much it. Daniel Ricardo pits, there we go. Another car in, as we set a personal best, 18.4, thanks to some DRS assistance. And now Lando Norris in the pit lane as well, along with one of the Aston Martins, that's Sebastian Vettel. Up to P13 for now, but of course we will go backwards eventually. I'm matching Paul Chair's pace at the moment, but the reality is we're very slow. We're both probably the worst car on the grid around here. First warning for track limits as we just clipped too much inside curb. It just kind of spat me off and sent me wide. Okay, AI cars starting to pit now. So it looks like we're going to have a mixture. Some cars are going to go for the hard tire, I think. Others are going to try and stretch to a soft tyre, like Paul Chair, I think, who is trying to go long for a set of softs. 18.6 and that lap, pretty decent pace for us, to be fair. Um, no DRS. We're going to have a bit of a phase now where we're actually faster than Paul Chair because, you know, he's trying to drag those mediums out, so these tyres have less wear, so we should start to catch up and also we're probably going to undercut him because I'm going to pit before him for a set of mediums. So he's going to have to suffer for the set of soft. So we might actually get an undercut on our teammate here if we keep chipping away. Okay, we think the 
bodies incurred some slight damage, but nothing too serious at the moment. Just be careful. Oh wow, really? Don't know how the hell where I've done that. But that's not ideal. Full chair pits. Also yellow flag. I think. Green flag. Okay, Teo's in the pits. Teo in the pits. Not sure. A lot of cards pitting though for the hard tar. A few more laps to go and then we can put the medium on, that should give us the advantage in the final stint, but we're just quite far behind. And now would be a great time for a virtual safety car. Not even a full safety car, just a virtual, that would get me back into the race. It's going to be close here with Checo Perez, but we do get in front for now. He's going to rejoin in all that traffic, so hopefully they battle away. Perez can hold up some of those cars. I'm going to pit probably the next lap, the medium. I'm going to extend by one more lap. We're meant to pit this one, but I'll go a little bit longer. Just see if we get lucky. I don't think I'll get overtaken on this lap, so we can afford to stay out one more. Perez looking for the move here. We'll leave the space, but I'm going to pit and get out of his way. Also kind of hoping that, you know, battling a little bit might cause a bit of chaos, but it looks like it's not going to happen. We're now going to get out of the way and box. Fuel's going to be an issue again this race. So this will be the last race with this issue as the upgrade's coming in the next race. Anyway, second gear for the pits to try and save a bit of fuel. We're going to rejoin in probably that gap between the Aston Martin and the Alpine from what I can see on the minimap. Quick stop please boys. Lovely, 2.3. That's going to put us out just behind Alonso and our cotton here. Right, cold rubber, let's be careful, but let's try and get up to speed. Uh, we're going to have the tire advantage now for the rest of the race on most of the cars around us. Right then, personal best, 17.4. I'm getting a bit of renewed optimism. If you look at the minimap, look at that massive train of cars heading into the Sector 1 split right now. It's all kind of merging and bunching up, so that might create a bit of chaos. You never know. Either way, we're catching up to the Alpines here. I wonder if Alonso has damage, or maybe his tyres are a bit old, either way. We're closing in step by step, bit by bit. Trying to be careful with the fuel one, the ERS, but I think we're going to struggle on both. One more lap and we should hopefully be within DRS range of the cars ahead. Getting there. Trying not to use too much battery or fuel, and I am short shifting like crazy. Porsche doing a good job of holding up the Alpines, as I say that. Alonso going for the move on him now. That might just help us close in a little bit as Ocon's also going to get involved. I think Alonso might have damage. Either way, they're still going at it here. And full chair off track, shoved off wide. So the Alpines will continue their battle. Let's try and get our teammate. Definitely struggling with the engine. Got a bit of wear going on. If you have a look, you can see turbocharger, ICE, MGUH as well. MGUK, all of it struggling for wet at the moment so yeah not ideal but that's kind of part of these races you have to take a risk and with these lower power circuits run you know more tired engines for now though we're just kind of chilling behind Paul Chair. I don't really have the pace I'll be honest I think we might be able to get past her at best and that's it so P18 is the best we can hope for this race bit of a lull bit of a dud which I'm sorry for but it's not really my fault I just you know the AR so unpredictable from one track to another you know we can win in Canada on 110 but then finish stone dead last in Hungary on 110 just doesn't make any sense right we're going to try and get Paul Chair here been saving fuel and DRS for the last three laps just to make sure I can make it but now with two laps to go it's time to make the move so we're going to try and get nice and close to our teammate here don't really care how we do the move we've just got to do it I want to try and beat him if I can here we go it's funny how I thought we had straight line speed, we've got absolutely no straight line speed whatsoever. Up the inside we go though into turn one. Paul Chair with the cutback. Drag race down to turn two. Here we go. Hamilton's out. Oh my god. That's a big one for the championship. Just a shame it's too late for a damn safety car. We just can't seem to get a safety car at the minute, which is a bit of a shame, but Hamilton out of the race, so that will move us up a position into P17. But that is huge for the championship going into the summer break. Right, here we go. 
last lap of the race, trying to see if I can set a personal best, but I do apologise. The last couple of races have been meh, you know, just low, boring, nothing happening. But it feels like we're also struggling with the car's pace. The reality is, you know, we are the third bottom team still, so we need to keep improving. But there we go, job done, P17. All right, race over. a performance to be proud of from our Hungarian Grand Prix winners. So, Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. it again an excellent performance at today's Grand Prix and they're certainly a team that know what they're doing out there Here we have the final race results then. So Ferrari pick up a massive 1-2 for the championship. And I mean a massive 1-2. Hamilton out of the race. That's a big, big moment. And also Joe finishing P9. That's not going to help. Worth noting, Perez finishes P3 in the end. Great recovery. Russell and Schumacher both has boys in the points in P4, P5, which is bad news for us. Alex Albon also in P6. Sebastian Vettel in P7. All these guys scoring points. And Gassi scoring one point in P10. So a pretty bad day in the office. And a lot of big drivers are actually underperforming. You know, if you look at the standings here, you know, Verstappen down in P8. Also Joe down in P9. Both McLarens out the points. And then Alonso in P16, who finished P2 in the last race you know a lot of surprises and Hamilton of course retiring we finished though in P17 just ahead of our teammate in P18 so standings after that one we're still P10 um 10 points behind Ocon or oh, sorry we're dropping down to P10 actually because of Sainz getting that second place finish so Sainz moves up to P7 Leclerc retakes the lead in the championship and is 23 points clear heading into the season break which is absolutely massive Albon up into P14 with that points finish uh Russell Schumacher still behind us and Joe as well, but they're all closing in and scoring points. In the constructors, we're still P7, and we still have a healthy 25-point lead over Alpha Tauri, but the gap to Haas has grown to 30 points. So we're going to need a bit of a miracle turnaround in the second half of the season to really pull that back, and the upgrades are going to have to work really well. And there we have it then. The season break is confirmed and arriving in four days' time. Before we go, we're going to go ahead and do some activities. We'll take care of the second part after the season break at the start of the next episode. We're going to go for chassis equipment upgrade. Now, we've got 2,100 R&D points. We've got two upgrades on the way. So we're going to go ahead and add some more. On the chassis, do we have any decent options here to possibly consider? We've got the plank, which has no discount, but it's pretty cheap. 1,100 points. Do we have any other ones? Tire blankets. I think we're going to go for we're going to go for fuel tank positioning. I'm going to go for the bigger one. We'll do the plank afterwards. Let's try and get this on. We're struggling in the chassis, so we need to improve. Then, possibly down the line, looking at the uh, aero, the front wing main plane might be the next one we make, as we need some front, you know, downforce. We're struggling with understeer, and it shows. So yeah, we'll go for those for now. So I think, yeah. That's going to be it for this episode. We don't really have enough points to buy anything anyway. So, yeah, let's um, move to the season break and, uh, yeah, end the episode. And there we have it then. Job done. So, the plan for the second half of the season is to buy the resource point generation, which is, of course, uh, level 4 on each of the facilities. We're going to try and get level 1 on the aero and the chassis to try and get some more resource points in. 
But until then, we're stuck with what we've got and we'll try and gradually improve. Either way, guys, if you enjoyed today's episode, leave a like and subscribe. Let's try and smash over a thousand likes. And as always, a big shout out to the members for supporting the content. Finally, check out the videos on screen if you haven't seen them. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one for the second half of the season in Belgium. Until then, take care and let's go back from me.